Welcome back, Zergay fans, to Nanali the Zidon. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and we're on to round two. This round is going to be played on Dune Patrol, a map we haven't actually seen in a very long time. But it is the map that's going to be played, and the map. I figure might as well watch. Hmm, I was thinking that Lamedes and Dying Friend would be a pretty intense match. But also, I'm thinking if I want to watch somebody who's not been shown yet. Icons has gotten a buy, by the way. So for now, it's just going to be Exploit and Felthos, Guy Up, Captain Klutz, Magman, Google Frog, and Lamedes Dying Friend. And. I think I want to go for Lamedes and Dime Friend. Whenever that gets started. That seems like it'd be a pretty strong match, and you know, early on get it. Get a good strong match in Lamedes and Dying Friend. I think Lamedes and Felthos is going to be the one that's really strong. Like that's going to be the one we really want to see. Probably won't come up for another round or two, but that will be the one to watch. However, Dying Friend is still a fairly strong player. I don't want to see Lamedes versus Dying Friend. Next map, probably we'll go with like Captain Close and Exploit or something like that. I'm guessing is how it'll go. Anyway, once we get. Ah. So Lamadeus, of course, is the strongest player currently playing 0k. Fail Thoughts, I'd say, is the second strongest, although it's hard to say because this has been a little while. I don't know if Fail Thoughts has played a huge amount recently. They've played some, just not like an absolutely massive amount, as much as they had before. It's just... It's always hard to tell. But I think it will be Lamadeus, Felthas, Diamfroind, Google Frog as the ones really contending for top spots. That seems most likely just considering what we've seen so far, and also what we've seen of these players in the recent past. Although between Google Frog and probably other guy upper icons, I'm not sure which I'd favor right now. At any rate, with that going, we should be able to get this pretty soon. I just feel like, I feel like it's taking a little longer than it needs to. Like I said, I'm ready. So yeah, Dying Friend Lamadeus. I expect Lamadeus in this map is going to go for Hovercraft, because that's what they normally do. Dying Friend, I'm not really sure. Probably Light Vehicles. That's a pretty common thing to go for, so that's what I expect they will go for. Anyway, once we get that up. You should have... Hmm. Ah, okay, there we go. We have the thing going, we have the game, we can start, we can actually talk about stuff that's relevant to things, rather than blathering on about random stuff that really doesn't matter. So the game has begun, we have... What do we have here? We have Dime Friend going for shield bots, as is Lama Deus. Both players going for the shields. Both players going for essentially the same opening. Convict into Bandit. Lama Deus slightly faster, but it's not likely to be relevant. Lama Deus more relevantly, though, does have a slightly faster economic construction going. Dime Friend focuses a little more on power than Lama Deus right at the bat. So Lama Deus, I'd say, has a slight advantage here, just going for that early metal. Still shouldn't be a huge deal. 
Not yet. Kind of depends on early raids. We have Lamadeus already coming out with the bandits. Already going over to Dime Friend's base. Dime Friend playing a bit more defensively, getting the radar up very early on so they know where Lamadeus' movements are going to be around their own base. They have the Lotus set up as well, and a couple bandits just prepared for anything. And already we see that Dime Friend has seen there is something going on. They know that Lamadeus has a bandit coming in here. Dime Friend probably won't be able to kill it, but does manage to defend their base a little longer. Lamadeus, on the other hand, they're probably thinking, oh, well, forget it. I can just build up, and that's what they're doing. Already setting up an expansion to the eastern side of the map, so that's the right play. I mean, Dime Friend's choosing to be defensive. Lamadeus knows that, assuming that Lamadeus doesn't actually get completely out of position, they should be fine. And this, this expansion isn't going to be punished, because... Lamadeus has their forces still pretty close, if they need to. Although Dimefriend actually is getting around where Lamadeus is not aware. Lamadeus has no idea that these bandits are coming over to the eastern side of the map. But that could still be the downfall. There isn't a whole lot defending here. Four bandits against a commander is enough to kill the commander without support. But I think we have support, so it's not a big deal. However, on the other hand, there's the real story. Bandits coming in, taking care of Lamadeus' expansions. By complete surprise, Lamadeus might actually lose this convict, and that is the main target. That's always what I say. Kill the workers. Always kill the workers. Unfortunately for Dime Friend, but fortunately for Lamadeus, that convict shield managed to keep it alive long enough that this bandit won't be able to deal a whole lot of damage to it. And no real harm was done long term. Lamadeus still managed to expand to the south side of the map. It still manages to maintain a metal advantage on top of the reclaim, so they're doing fine. No real harm was done. Bit of a shame that that bandit managed to walk, or sorry, convict managed to walk away quickly enough the bandits could not kill it. I mean, Dime Friend still has a, a bit of an economic advantage as a result of destroying what they destroyed, but that could be turned around right now. A couple defenders are up, but that's not going to be enough to defend against four bandits. It'll help, but it won't actually kill them. I mean, one defender kills a bandit with all three missiles. So we aren't going to see those defenders managing to do a huge amount of damage. And still, they deter Lamadeus. Lamadeus is not silly, not stupid. They're not going to throw all their bandits into defenders and have them die. So I don't expect there to be any major issues here. On the other hand, I do expect there to be a, a bit more of an issue with Dimefront apparently coming in. Still wants to make life miserable for Lamadeus. Not a bad idea either, because Dimefriend has been maintaining a plus four metal advantage for most of this match. Or most of this match, rather. Hmm. Anyway, Lamadeus does have the... Ooh, the commander set up in a fairly strong position. They have the bandits nearby. It's not going to be a big deal for them to defend. It's a free metal extractor for Dimefreund, but that's more of just an expansion delay. However, every small delay counts, and with Dimefreund having an economic advantage, it's still worth doing. It still pays off. Dimefreund looks to be trying to come in from an angle to basically get Lamadesa's forces as they're lined up conveniently, and manages to does does manage to get a free bandit, or nearly free bandit. The defender makes that not quite as free as would be a desired, but that's that's still going to be a complete suicide attack. Sorry, dying friend. So with that, looks like Lama Day is going for the counterattack, and not enough defenses are up to completely stop this. These bandits should be able to take care of all of these metal extractors, possibly get rid of the Lotus as well. I mean, there's not a whole lot of static defenses up for dying friend. They have a Lotus here and there, but five bandits can get rid of that. This looks like it'll turn around, though. As it is, Dimefriend already building up their defenses, and like I said, they already have a strong economy. They have actually nowhere near enough production to make that economy work. Compared to Lamadeus, Lamadeus right now is actually managing to make their military far more efficient just by having more of a military, by having more production. Dimefriend does have the caretakers up, so they won't be excessing metal, but that's a bit of a shame they didn't manage to build up as quickly as they could have otherwise. Still, at the same time, Dime Friend able to get more static defense up, so that's managing to maintain their territory and maintain their economic lead. So at this point, Lamadeus is pretty secure in their economy right now. I don't think Dime Friend is going to be going in for any more raids. 
They have some bandits up just for the purpose of keeping some defense, keeping something mobile to deter any major attacks, but at this point, Diaphragm's got the static, de static defense. The static defense will do fine. That's the main option they have, and that's what they're going to do. Of course, Lamadeus is prepared for coming in against heavy units. The Racketeer is up. It might manage to actually deal some damage. Does open things up for the bandits, however. At the very least, gives Lamadeus some confidence they can go forward. And Diamond Commander... Ooh, that is going to be a juicy target. I mean, if Diamond Commander gets attacked at all... But I don't know if that's going to happen. Not right now, it won't. Diamond coming in with about a dozen bandits to help defend, against their commander, or defend their commander. Finally managing to get the caretakers up. So they are now making their production actually on par with Lamadeus, if not slightly ahead. Taking full advantage of the economy that they had built up thus far. And, thankfully for them, not excessed. So now the territory as it is. The southwest side seems a little bit weaker. Entirely stackedly defended, although Dimefrain coming with a nice flank attack on these bandits. Not a whole lot is going to stop anything from letting Dimefrain tear apart all the bandits coming in here. They're coming in, hitting static defense, but being flanked by the bandits. Managing to get rid of basically the entire attack force, or at least route the attack force, without managing to lose much of anything. I mean, lost one Lotus and a couple bandits. But at the same time, a second attack coming in from the eastern side of the map. Way more bandits over here. The convict finally goes down, and Lamadeus is coming in with their bandits in a nice line. Very convenient for Diamond to get rid of. The Racketeers do manage to stop that, but enough damage was dealt, I'd say, to make that worthwhile. I mean, there's no convict here, so it takes that little bit longer to get the reclaim in. And the Western assault didn't really do much either. So Diamond managing to maintain the territory over to the west. Looks like they might come in for another assault over to the east. But it looks like that could stop very shortly. The Stardust is up. There's an outlaw up. There's not a whole lot here that's going to make it difficult for Lamadeus to defend anything anymore. So Diamond's going to have to go for some other army composition. Pure Bandit is not going to do the trick. Bandit Rogue might do the trick, but I kind of doubt it. Rogue Thug would probably do the trick best, and that's what Lamadeus has gone for, and that's going to be turning this game around very shortly. I mean, the eastern side is less crucial, though. This is actually not the front where the army composition of Lamadeus is going to be most useful. It'll help, yeah, but it would be absolutely terrifying over to the southwest. And actually, Thug Rogue Outlaws, exactly what Dimefriend's going over to the southwest as well, so... Basically, this is going to kind of rotate around. Dimefriend, however, will lose their commander if they're not careful. And I don't see them being all that careful. They're going in for the particle beam shots, doing what they can, but it's not enough. And Dimefriend's commander, basically dead. Especially thanks to the Racketeers. The Rogue shots should have finished off. Man, those Racketeers coming in from Lamadeus, that's, that's practically cruel. At any rate, Dying Friends Commander does manage to escape barely, but at the same time, the eastern side is falling to Lamadeus, while the southwest is falling to Dying Friend. Like I said, this is kind of spinning around, where it's just everything's rotating counterclockwise in terms of control. However, Dying Friend, with a slight military advantage and a slight position advantage, and Lamadeus having their bandits basically just become outlaw food, opens everything up. So Dying Friend now should be able to tear everything apart in Lamadeus' base, possibly even break Lamadeus' base completely. Lamadeus' commander is having a tricky time right now. They're not gonna die yet. And actually, Dimefront has just lost their commander, so this could still be a problem. Dimefront has already built storage in advance, so they're not doing too bad. But they did just lose their commander. They did lose a lot of their defenses to the northeast, so this, like I said, is a complete rotation of control. Although Diamond force is getting a little more stretched from the looks of it than Lamadeus' forces. Lamadeus' force is primarily made of bandits and actually getting torn apart, but the center of the map, that's where it's becoming a problem. Lamadeus managing to come through the pond, make that work. Diamond with the Firewalkers already prepared to push away whatever might come in, but the damage has been done. Diamond has pretty much 
managed to... I'd say lose overall. They lost their commander. They lost a lot of their presence to the northeast. They seem to be trying to consolidate the presence in the southeast. Or south center. Definitely southwest. In the northeast, obviously, they want to regain their presence, but it's gonna be a bit tricky. However, they're not really getting much challenge from Lamadeus. Like, after that main strike force from Lamadeus, Lamadeus is focusing much more on the southwest, not as much on the northeast, and much, much more on keeping the center under their control. But now with the Firewalker, it looks like Dimefront is able to take out the center, and Lamadeus also going for Firewalkers, because that's kind of what you do these days, is you just go for Firewalkers to get rid of large-scale static defense. And this is Lamadeus' force coming into the southwest, which will basically clean up. Dimefrain might actually lose the southwest just as they did the northeast. Counterattack might be forthcoming to the northeast, but this is such a spread out force and not really all that well set up for dealing with what's in the northeast, what Lamadeus has set up, particularly the Stardust, that I don't see much damage being meaningfully dealt. Like, the rogues should be able to take care of the Stardust, but at the same time, there's not a whole lot defending the southwest. So right now, Dimefriend is not in a really nice position. They're in an uncomfortable position that's really only being maintained by Firewalkers. And once the threat of Firewalkers is no longer unique to Dimefriend, we could see that turn right around. That being said, if that Stardust goes down, it is going to be over. Like, Lamadeus will have a strong two-pronged attack coming in, or at least a strong one-pronged attack coming in on the north side. So, an attack. Thankfully for them, their force is there in time to prevent any follow-up. But with that Stardust destroyed, this force is the only thing stopping the western, the eastern side of the map from being completely destroyed by Dimefriend. Dimefriend could just collapse on it. If they wanted to. Dimefriend clearly is much more concerned about the southern side of the map than the eastern side of the map. But, either way... Dimefriend's not got a whole lot of resistance coming in, and Lama Deus is not attacking directly. They're going through the pond again, just to try to circumvent Dimefriend's defenses, or at least Dimefriend's assault force, forcing them to retreat, which is always what you want to do. So I like Lama Deus's play here, but at the same time, Lama Deus is being pushed away in the southern side of the map, and Dimefriend is consolidating that. So as long as Dimefriend can stop the forces here from doing much damage, they should be in a position to win this game. If they can't, however, then that's pretty much Lamadeus' game to lose. But Lamadeus' forces are routed. Dimefriend is managing to take quite a bit of the southern side of the map and get in a strong force that should be able to get through the Firewalker without too much trouble. The shields will be able to block off most of the flames coming through. So that's likely to work out pretty much perfectly. The, the only problem is that this force over here in the eastern side was routed, not destroyed. So it will come back, it is going to hit the northeast, and that is going to put a lot of pressure on the dive front. Especially with the center having been taken by Lamadeus. There's not a whole lot stopping Lamadeus from just walking straight through and taking care of Dimefront's main base. Like, it, this map always looks kind of like a two-zone map when you're playing it normally. But once that center has been taken, it's actually just open. Especially with bots, it's just an open map. And once that's made clear, it's actually really difficult to defend it. It's just at the start of the game, it feels like it is a two-lane map. And it's often played like a two-lane map. At any rate, Dimefriend might just be losing the north side of the map. They are doing a valiant job defending it, but their forces are being split between the north and the south. The southern side actually is working out all right in their favor, but the racketeers from Lamadeus could put a stop to that. And if they do, Lamadeus has this game. And at this point, Lamadeus already looks like they kind of have this game. Dimefriend still managing to hold on. They still have a strong enough economy. I mean, the economy is still basically at parity. Like I said, control rotated counterclockwise, but didn't really change all that much. 
the main tactical difference between the two players is that Lamadeus has loads of Racketeers and Dimefroin doesn't. And Dimefroin had the early Firewalkers, but that advantage is over. Because that was advantage of time, and with Lamadeus having their own Firewalkers and consistently producing them while Dimefroin's focusing entirely on their shield units, Lamadeus does have that advantage on the Firewalkers. Like, there, it's gonna be a growing advantage on Firewalkers. And the sumo is a sumo. I mean, it exists. You can pull units around. There isn't really the moderator combo that you normally see with sumos. Like, sumo moderator is where things get really scary. They pull units back, and every unit pulled back just gets hit by a barrage of moderator fire and dies. That is not gonna happen here. Unless Lamadeus changes their tactics up considerably, but that's... That's not looking likely. I mean, still, sumos can be intimidating, but I don't think that particular one's going to be a major problem. However, the Firewalker on here completely wiping out Lamadeus' defense force to the south, other than the Racketeers and Sumo, but that's enough. The Northeast, however, is having a much harder time defending itself, not as much from Firewalker damage, although there is still that. Just from straightforward attacks, the Racketeers are entirely on the southern side of the map and being pushed a little bit far. They're still in position, but they are having a bit of a tough time. Although, they're giving Dimefriend a harder time, so I'd say it works out in the end. Still, the Northeast, that is where Dimefriend has their advantage, and they are... They're consolidating it, as they normally do. They aren't really pressing it. This game has largely been around about consolidating advantages and then turning those into larger advantages. Dimefriend also going to be going for Jax, so... I guess that's their counter to the Sumo, or at the very least, their counter to the Racketeers... Like, it would, it would absorb a lot of the attention from the Racketeers, allowing the rest of the army to deal damage and not get disabled. Or disarmed. That is its own reward. So I'll grant that. Oh, and Aquan, I'm pointing out in the, stream, in the spectator chat that, yeah, Dimefront is actually economy stall- or is energy stalling. A little bit. Not much, but they weren't doing so hot for energy. They sh- now, it looks like they should be able to build that up quickly enough. Managing to get some power plants up. Lamadeus, on the other hand, not as much of a concern. They don't have anywhere near the economy of Dimefriend, but right now Dimefriend's production is hampered by their lack of energy. Not by much, though. Dimefriend's advantage is actually quite significant now that they've taken out the Northeast, taken out Lamadeus' control there, and taken control of the South and maintained it. Dimefriend's actually doing very well for economy. Lamadeus is only taking parity because of Reclaim. That's parity with Reclaim. So Dimefriend is still in an extremely strong position. The Jack's coming in to take care of the Sumo. Heavy enough to not worry about the gravity guns, and now that the Sumo has done their jump, it's not a big deal. Sumo probably will jump again, but still, that's... This is still routing the Sumo. That's the important thing. The Sumo is routed. There wasn't a whole lot else there to build up. Lamadeus going for a Dante that's essentially their last hope right now, while Dimefriend just continuing to build up as many shield bot factory units as they can. And with the Firewalkers and Rogues, that should be enough. Lamadeus indeed throws in the towel. Dimefriend going 2-0 right off the bat. So, very strong performance coming in from Dimefriend. I am impressed. And that is going to actually end off round two. Surprisingly enough. So, we have... We have right now a situation where Filthos, Gaiop, Google Frog all won their matches. So right now the standings are pretty strongly in their favor, actually. If you look, Dying for Google Frog with two well, Dying for Google Frog, Filthos, all with two points. No losses whatsoever. Lamadeus, Gaiop, Magman going one and one. Icons, Captain Clux, and Exploit. Well, and Icons as well going one and one because of the buy. And Captain Clutz getting a buy for next round with exploit 02. So next round is looking like I wanna see I wanna see Icons and Exploit. I haven't seen either of them yet. So that'll be the next round. Icons versus Exploit on Iced Coffee. Oh, hey, my map. Anyway, so that'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned.